The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Six American. Lucky's pay more. To give you a cigarette that's finer, milder, more enjoyable, Lucky's pay more. Lucky's pay millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. And the men who really know tobacco, the tobacco experts, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Yes, at auction after auction, when a basket of really fine tobacco is offered for sale, as the price climbs up and up, as the final bid is made, the top bid, time and again, you'll hear... And another basket of really superior tobacco goes to the makers of Lucky Strike. No wonder. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine tobacco that means a milder, more enjoyable cigarette for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, for more real deep down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky. You'll agree, in all the world, there's no finer cigarette than Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after suffering from a bad cold for several weeks, Jack Benny went to the hospital for a nasal operation. Today, he's home again, recuperating. As we look in, Rochester is tidying up the house. Gee, it's good to have the boss home again. He put off this operation for a long time, but when we got to the hospital, he sure was brave. I'll always remember the smile he gave me as those four nurses dragged him up the stairs. <laughs> well, I better finish unpacking his things. Say, what's this? Well, the boss's diary. He must have taken it to the hospital with him. I wonder if I ought to read it. Oh, why not? Who am I kidding? After all, I read his diary, he reads mine, I pity him, he envies me. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see what he has to say. Here's the first entry. October 17th, Dear Diary. I am now in the hospital. I entered this morning for a minor operation. I'm not sure, but I think they put me in the wrong ward because the patient in the bed next to me just had a baby. (laughs) The nurse corrected her mistake and moved me from the ward to a semi-private room. It's cozy here, but one of the men in bed with me has cold feet. Doggone, I can't understand why the boss didn't get a private room. After all, he owns the hospital. October 18th. Early this morning, I was operated on. They gave me some ether and put me to sleep. I had the most wonderful dream. I dreamed that I was the maid in Ciro's powder room. (laughs) When I came to, the operation was over. The nurse was standing behind me, stroking my hair. I'm so glad I remembered to bring it. (laughs) That's my boss who who wears that. October 19th, this morning I had my first visitor. It was Rochester. He told me that since I've been in the hospital, my phone has been ringing constantly at home. He said there have been calls from Lana Turner, Ann Sheridan, and Paulette Goddard. And they all told Rochester to send me their love. (laughs) <laughs> the way I lie to keep that old man happy. <laughs> After Rochester left, the nurse brought me dinner, my first meal since the operation. However, I was still sick from the ether and couldn't eat a thing. But the man in the next bed was very hungry, and fortunately I had change for a $5 bill. <laughs> What does he mean, fortunately? He's got the only pajamas I ever saw with a hip pocket. (laughs) October 21st, the doctor told me I could leave the hospital. I felt so good and was such a beautiful day, I decided to walk home. As I started up Santa Monica Boulevard, people kept looking at me and smiling. 
I smiled back till I realized I was still wearing my nighty. <laughs> Rather than go back and get my clothes, I lit a candle, and in the next three blocks, I sold 28 Fisk tires. <laughs> Hospital nightgowns are all right, providing the wind is against you. <laughs> well, that's the last entry. Mr. Benny's diary is always the same, dull but clean. <laughs> I better go in the living room and see if he wants anything. Well, Mr. Benny, how are you feeling? Oh, fine, fine, Rochester. It's amazing how much better I am since I had that obstruction removed from my nose. How long were you in the operating room? Uh, 28 minutes and 41 seconds. My producer timed it. <laughs> anyway, I sure feel a lot... Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Gee, you look great. How are you feeling? Wonderful, Mary. Come here and give me a great big kiss. Okay. Yeah. Wow! Jack, you've never kissed me that long before. I can breathe through my nose now. <laughs> hey, that was some kiss, wasn't it, Mary? Mary, what are you staring at me for? Are you sure the only thing they gave you at the hospital was ether? <laughs> That's all. It was just the, the operation made a new man out of me. Honestly, Mary, that Dr. Langley's a miracle worker. You know that for four weeks I could hardly breathe or talk. And to think he took me when I felt so low and miserable and by his great surgical skill made me feel absolutely wonderful. Uh, how much did he charge you for the operation? A hundred dollars, dirty crook. <laughs> <laughs> but, Jack, that doesn't sound like too much money for an operation. But the whole operation only took 28 minutes and 41 seconds. You realize that at that rate he's being paid over $200 an hour. But, Jack, he probably doesn't do more than one of those operations a month Well, it's my fault if he can't get steady work <laughs> Why charge oh, me? Oh, Jack, take it easy, calm down Yeah Have you got a cigarette, Mary? Mm, just a minute and I'll see Sound like you got a cold I know I got a package in here I, I better dump everything out on the table Mary, is that your purse, or are you moving? <laughs> Here's a cigarette, Jack. Thanks. You know, Mary's funny. If we were on the radio and I wanted a cigarette, I'd say, Mary, have you got a lucky strike? But here in my house, I just asked for a cigarette. We know it's a lucky strike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say, boss, look what time it is. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, get the bottle, will you, Rochester? Bottle? Yes, Mary. The doctor thought I ought to take a little brandy every three hours as a stimulant. Hand it to me, Rochester. I'll open it myself. Thanks. <laughs> there Hello? Hey, Jackson, did you just open a bottle of brandy? <laughs> Why, yes Yes, Phil, I did But how... That's all I want to know <laughs> well, I'll be... How did he smell it all the way over in Encino? <laughs> you know, Mary, sometimes I... Come in! Here I am, Jackson, brought my own glass. <laughs> <laughs> Phil? Phil, how'd you get over here from your house so fast? Well, I would have been here sooner, but I was in my underwear when I phoned. Hi, you live <laughs> Hello, Phil. Well, come on, Jackson, lift that glass, tilt that bottle. Just a minute, Phil. Here, there's some trick here someplace. Now, explain to me how you could possibly I'll get it. I'll explain it to you later, later, later. Look, while I'm here, I want to ask you something. Will it be all right if I miss rehearsal? I'd like to fly home to Mississippi and see my alma mater play football. Football? Yeah, it's their traditional game. do wah diddy tech against ham Hawk high <laughs> No, do wah diddy tech and ham Hawk high Tell me, Philip, in which of these great institutions of learning did you matriculate? Jackson, please, Mary's here. <laughs> 
Phil, I, look, Phil, I mean, which, which one of those high schools did you attend? Oh, oh, oh. well, you, I went to do what did he tech, but, but I didn't graduate. <laughs> no. <laughs> Phil, I was always under the impression that you were a Phi Beta Kappa man. Yeah, but don't bandy it about. Let it be our little secret. <laughs> Phil, every time you open your mouth, your secret is safe. Ain't it the truth? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Jackson, it's, it's good to see you looking so... So long, kids. See you later. Where are you going? What's your hurry? Remley just opened a bottle of bourbon in Glendale. <laughs> I can't understand how he got here from Encino and... If that's Phil calling from Glendale, I'm going to... Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Don. How are you feeling? Oh, fine, Don. I haven't felt so good in years. Although, as a result of the operation, I did lose about eight pounds. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Jack. You'll gain it back. I guess so. You know, once when I was in the hospital, I lost 40, 46 pounds. Well, Don, 46 pounds off you is nothing. Nothing? I was three weeks old at the time. <laughs> Oh, oh. Now, Jack, I know you're confined to your house today, but I just called to tell you that the Sportsman Quartet is going to be on the air in about ten minutes, and I thought you might like to hear them. They're dedicating their song to you. To me? Oh, thanks, Don. I'm glad you told me. I'll be sure and listen in. Thanks again. You're welcome, Jack. See you later. Don! Don, what was that? The phone booth. My girdle broke. <laughs> Oh, it's very good to let yourself go once in a while like that. So long, Don. Oh, Mary, remind me to listen to the sportsman, will you? Of course, they'll be on the air in about ten minutes. But what station? Oh, my goodness, I forgot to ask Don, but I'll find it. Gee, I hope I feel well enough to go to the Copeland Grove Tuesday night for the sportsman's opening. Oh, Jack, you sit down. I'll get it. Okay. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. Come on in and... Wait a minute. It isn't cold today. What are you wearing that muffler and heavy overcoat? I rode over on my bicycle, and I don't want to catch pneumonia. Now, Dennis, what is riding in your bicycle got to do with pneumonia? There's a leak in the front tire, and every time it comes around, it blows on me. <laughs> well, from you, that sounds logical. Come on in. Who is it, Mary? You'll be sorry. Oh, come on in, Dennis. Hi, kid. Hello, Mr. Benny. I'm glad you're out of the hospital and feeling better. Thanks, thanks. When my mother heard you were home again, she told me to bring this package over. Oh, <laughs> from your mother? Yeah, and this card goes with it. Card? What does it say? No starch. <laughs> Dennis, why don't you sit down? Mary and I... Oh, I am to... sitting. I couldn't tell with that long overcoat you're wearing. <laughs> He's wearing a muffler, too. And three sweaters. That's nice. Anyway, if it's about... Jack. The... Huh? Aren't you going to ask Dennis why he's wearing a muffler, three sweaters, and an overcoat? Mary, if he came in here wearing hip boots, a grass skirt, and had clawed reins on a leash, I wouldn't ask him why. <laughs> oh, you're just mad because one of my eyes is blue, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of your eyes. Now, look, Dennis, if you came over to find... yoo Anybody home? Huh? Well, Mr. Kitzel! Oh, hello, Mr. Come on Kitzel. in, come on in. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Well, Mr. Kitzel, certainly nice you dropped in to see me. I want to thank you for visiting me in the hospital. Well, I believe in the old philosophy. If you can't be friendly when the weather is bad, don't say hello in the sunshine. <laughs> I know what you mean, yeah. And Mr. Benny, if you had taken care of your cold, maybe you wouldn't have had to go to the hospital. No, no, Mr. Kitzel, the cold had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. B, don't belittle our cold. Last April, my wife caught a cold and it gave her laryngitis. Laryngitis? That was six months ago, and she still can't talk above a whisper. My good, why don't you do something about it? If she starts to get better, I will. <laughs> but seriously, Mr. Benny, if you ever have any more trouble, do yourself a favor and send for my nephew. He's a nose and throat specialty. <laughs> yes, yes. Just, just nose and throat? Once in a while, he takes out an appendix on the side. Oh, on the side. Hey, that's... That's quite a joke, Mr. Kitzel. Yeah. 
Livingstone? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. By the way, Mr. Kitzel, you know our singer. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Doris Day. <laughs> no, it's Dennis Day. Don't let those three sweaters fool you. <laughs> oh, Dennis Day. Mr. Day. Excuse me for being excited, but it's a pleasure to meet you. I buy all your records, and my wife is crazy about them. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the man talks about broken angles. <laughs> you know, Mr. J, what my wife got from your collection? She's got Alan Must Be Heaven, McNamara's Band, Mother McCree, but my favorite one is Clancy Law the Bagel. <laughs> no, no, that's Boom. Eat one. <laughs> You're not kidding. Well, Mr. Benny, I just wanted to wish you good health, and now I got to be running along. Well, goodbye, Mr. Kitzel, and thanks for dropping in. You're welcome, and as they say in French, Lafayette, I was here. <laughs> Ah, uh, what a nice guy. He visited me at the hospital, and then he came here at the house. Oh, Jack, you told me to remind you. You want to hear the sportsman quartet? Oh, yes, yes. They're singing about me, too. I almost forgot. I better turn on the radio and find that station. And now a word to ladies who are overweight. Do you have careless hips? Well, you can reduce immediately. No drugs, no exercise, no diet. Just come to our salon and back into our fuzz saw. <laughs> it's a ladies' program. I don't want that. Well, any fellas, I didn't squeal. I didn't tell the cops. Don't pin a rap on me. Don't that isn't it either. What no program is this? I can't get that program. This may be it. Mom, it's Shannon Easy. <laughs> <laughs> you may see a stranger. You may see a stranger. Oh, oh my goodness. What station is that quartet on? That's not it either. Oh, that's the same thing. I want to get the station with the quartet. Oh, John, why can't I get the quartet here? Del Pan Don, I wonder if Don meant today. Fellas, please put down those guns. You gotta believe me. You gotta. You gotta believe me. Tom is Kennedy. You may see a stranger. You may see a stranger. I guess the stranger saw her first. <laughs> I wonder what station. And yeah, now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we have another number from the Sportsman Quartet. This is it, Mary, this is it. I'd like to repeat the prizes we're giving away in our giant jackpot. One package of Lifesavers, a box of rye crisps, and a real, genuine, imported $3,000 trainer pack. Uh, what did he say? I don't know, I didn't get it either. We are also giving away a Dr. Scholl's foot pad, one free dancing lesson at Arthur Murray's, and a $15,000 crock and soup. Uh, what was that? I don't know. It sounded like crock and soup. <laughs> and in addition to these, a can of strong hot dog food, a complete set of shoelaces, and a lifetime supply of that new miracle drug, Sophathia Papagaya. Oh, a wonderful drug. I hope the person who wins it is sick. <laughs> and now for our special surprise. You'll love this. Mr. Benny, what's a crock and soup? Quiet, I want to hear this. Huh? This week, we are adding to our list 825 more prizes. A can of circus penis. Count them. Gee, that's wonderful. <laughs> and now the sportsman quartet, assisted by Mel Blank... Mel Blank? ...will sing a number from that new picture Jolson sings again. Sonny Boy, and it's dedicated to Jack Benny. I knew Mel Blank would get into that. I knew it. Oh. 
climb upon our knee, Jackie boy. Though you're 53, Jackie boy. I'm 39. We've no way of knowing just how old you're growing, but we love you so, Jackie boy. When there are gray. We don't mind the gray skies. You make them blue, Speedy Riggs. Speedy Riggs? I thought they're singing about me. Your auctioneering. Mm -hmm. That's Mel Mel. That's Mel Blank. Mm -hmm. I know that's Mel. <laughs> Speedy Riggs. You're from Kentucky, and we know your word. Let's light a lucky, the best right here on earth. They paid all. <laughs> when we're old and gray, we'll smoke night and day. <laughs> Love you so, lucky And now for the announcement you've been waiting for. The winner of all those grand prizes is, uh, is, uh, I have it right here on a slip of paper. The winner is Frank Nelson of 1427 North. Frank Nelson? That's me! Oh, lucky me! <laughs> Gee, he is lucky. Imagine winning a $15,000 croc and zoom. <laughs> Mary, turn it off. There's nothing else on the radio tonight. Well, if there's anything good on television. Rochester, call up Sears Roebuck Television to pop in and but see... Boss, you called them last week! Oh, yes. There must be some company that hasn't given us a demonstration yet. <laughs> Maybe I ought to... I'll get it. You know, Mary, I'm glad Don called me about the quartet. I well, know this it. way, gentlemen. Who is it, Rochester? It's the boys from the Beverly Hills Beaver Club. Oh, Joey, Stevie, Butch, come on in. Hello, Hello Mr. Mr. Benny. Well, it's certainly nice of you kids to pay me this visit. Go ahead, Joey. Read the speech. I'm looking for it. Speech? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> Mr. Benny, your brother Beavers held a meeting and voted that this committee pay you a visit for four reasons. To welcome you home from the hospital, to wish you a rapid recovery, to invite you to our annual picnic. Your dues are three months behind. <laughs> Well, that was just an oversight. I'll take care of it. And, Mr. Benny, we'd like to make a request in regards to the picnic. A request? Yes. Our last picnic didn't turn out so good. We lost 80 cents. Yeah. So we thought it might help if you lowered the price of the sandwiches. <laughs> well, the, the dues I'll pay, but the sandwich... Jack. Mary, I was going to say the dues I'll pay, but the sandwiches I'll give them for nothing. By the way, boys, you know Miss Livingston. Oh, sure. We have a picture of her in our clubhouse. A picture of me? Yeah. You were voted as the girl who could make us take cod liver oil and like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, fellas. And boys, this is Dennis Day. Gee, is he the Dennis Day who sings on the radio? That's him. Gee, Mr. Day, can I shake your hand? Sure. Can I shake your hand, too? Certainly. Butch, Butch, it's Dennis Day. Why don't you shake hands with him? I'm a Sinatra man. <laughs> <laughs> now, Butch, that wasn't nice to say in front of Dennis. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Benny. Frankie sends me, too. He does? Yeah, he's too weak to go himself. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, please. Say, Mr. Benny, what was it you went to the hospital for? Oh, I had an operation, but I'm home now and everything is fine. Oh. What are you thinking about, Joey? Well, my mother once went to the hospital, and when she came home, she brought me a little brother. Ah, oh, well, that was nice. And then she went to the hospital again, and when she came home, she brought me a little sister. Well... Say, Joy, your mother went to the hospital again last week, didn't she? 
Yeah, but when she came home, she didn't bring me nothing. Oh, that's too bad, Joey. What did you want? A turtle. <laughs> well, maybe next time. <laughs> hey, boss, this is your first day home, and you've been up and around quite a while. So what? Don't you think you ought to take a little nap? Yeah, I guess you're right, Rochester. Well, I'm awfully glad you dropped in, fellow beavers. I appreciate it. We'll run along now, Mr. Benny. We'll see you at the next meeting. Well, I don't know if I'll be able to make it, Stevie. You see, I've had this trouble with my nose, and that's why I was operated on. I was in the hospital for five days, and it'll be at least another week before I can leave the house. A little cold, he makes a big thing out of it. <laughs> Did you say something, Butch? Oh, he didn't say anything. Come on, fellas, let's go. Gee, they're nice boys. Jack, I think I'll run along, too. Me too, Mr. Benny. Okay, I'm glad you came over, kid. So long, Mary. Goodbye, Dennis. Bye, Bye. Jack. Ah, it's nice to be home again, Rochester. And you know, it isn't bad being sick once in a while, either. People are so nice to you. Yeah. Now, come on, boss. Let me help you upstairs. No, no, Rochester. I'll go in the other room and stretch out on the couch. If I fall asleep, wake you in time for dinner. Yes, sir. Now, take it easy and don't exert yourself. I won't. Now, let's see. Where's the... Oh, here it is. Dear Diary, this is my first day back from the hospital, and I feel wonderful. I had a lot of visitors, and they were awfully nice. But there are two things I can't figure out. How Phil got here so fast from Encino, and what in the world is a crock and soup? <laughs> oh, well, I'll figure it out when I'm strong. We'll be back in just a moment, but first... 61. It's old Milgan. To give you a finer cigarette, a milder, more enjoyable cigarette, Lucky's pay more. Yes, at the tobacco auctions, at market after market, Lucky's pay millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, ripe, mild tobacco that gives you more, far more more real deep-down smoking enjoyment. No wonder a recent survey reveals more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. And now, listen to what Mr. Doug Dudley of Clinton, North Carolina, recently said about his experience at the tobacco auction. In my 12 years as a tobacco auctioneer, I've sold about 180 million pounds of tobacco. And season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, ripe tobacco. Tobacco that's tops for mild and mellow smoking. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 10 years. So for your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment, Smoke the smoke, tobacco experts smoke. Lucky Strike. Remember, there's more for you in a Lucky because Luckies pay more. Millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco they know will give you a finer, milder, more enjoyable cigarette. Good reason to make your next carton Lucky Strike. <laughs> Well, boss, you took a nice nap. Do you want me to get you something to eat? No, Rochester, I don't think so. Answer, will you please? Hello? Yes? He's feeling much better, Miss Lamar. Yes, ma'am, I'll tell him. Thanks for calling. That was sweet. Who was that, Rochester? Hetty Lamar? No, no, boss, that was Dorothy. Oh, you mean Dorothy Lamour? No, Dorothy Lamar. She's the cook next door. <laughs> Oh, her. Well, she works for the Coleman's. Ronnie probably wants to know how I'm getting along. You'll make something out of it, won't you, boss? <laughs> well, that's undoubtedly what it was. Good night, folks. Be sure to hear Dennis Day and the day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 